tender chicken in every bite. I'm talking about baked to perfection. Rosemary, thyme, garlic, a little lemon, white wine to finish it off. Oh my gosh, it is a great meal. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the wagon. And what are we talking about? Not stopping at the rotisserie aisle in the grocery store no more, huh? -uh. Oven roast that thing, bake it in a Dutch oven or whether you be inside or outside. Folks, so tender, so tasty, so much flavor. Guess what's in it that you didn't think was gonna be there? A little white wine, uh-huh. And a whole bunch of that garlic and lemon because folks, we gotta have that to bring out the true flavor of that chicken. Let's talk about bacon chicken. Now, Wait, bacon chicken or baking chicken? Here we go. <laughs> B A K I N. No. <laughs> bacon. We're just going to bake that chicken in a Dutch oven, but you can do it in a conventional oven at home. Now, we've done these at the house, and folks, a thing that I really think that I like to use if I'm going to cook them in the house is one of them big lodge enamel cast iron Dutch ovens that fits in there. Them things hold heat so well, they seal good, keep that moisture in there. Let's talk about what do we need to buy. Well, let me guess a chicken. Yes. Now, this chicken here weighs a whopping coming in at what it is 5.78 pounds now that is a hefty duty chicken it is i figure you're going to get about six servings out of this chicken if you're looking for a chicken that's just going to feed like two of you i'd recommend just going ahead and getting them cornish game hens because ooh, they are oh so tender so let's go ahead and get this chicken out and i'm gonna ask y'all a question and you can leave us a comment down there below or you can just say, well, I'm not even gonna answer that question. Do you rinse a chicken or do you not rinse a chicken? That is the question. Now, a lot of folks tell me when you rinse it, you just spread any kind of this chicken all over the sink and everything else. My grandmother just squirted them off with a water hose. She'd hang them up and let them dry and get them ready to go in the freezer. But get you something that is big enough to hold this bird that you have captured and folks, we ain't cooking none of what's inside. I need you to what? Look in here on the inside of that cavity because they're always going to give you that treasure there which makes really good gravy at Thanksgiving, but we ain't making no gravy right now, so bear with me while Bertha has a snack. So I want you to go ahead too and look, make sure, because a lot of times on these chickens, there'll be some pin feathers that are still sticking on there, you can see. And folks, you can pull them off with tweezers or you can just go ahead and take your little old torch and just burn them off. That's what I usually like to do. Now I used, to, I do like to make sure that this cavity is open here enough because we're gonna need that for ventilation. But now comes this deal where my grandma said was very important. You got to dry that chicken before you can bake a chicken. That is gonna help the seasoning, but it's also gonna help that skin crisp up too. But I do need you to take it out about 30 minutes ahead of time and set it somewhere that is beagle proof and let this rascal warm up a little. Well, while we go ahead and let that chicken air dry a little bit more, I got me what? Some butter right there. Remember I told you that white wine? We're gonna take about that what, much. What and kind well, of white wine is it? This says here it is a Ryder Estate Chardonnay. Oh. We need to mix a little olive oil in with that butter, so I'd say about that much. And then I need you to go ahead and zest you some lemon in there, yeah. Grab your garlic gun, folks. Load it up, because we need them in there as well. Shan had a very good question there, didn't you, Shan? Well, I don't know. Yes, I thought it was very good. Why did we dry it if we're fixing to wet it again? Well, my daddy used to say there, water run off a duck's back. You know what I mean? You know why? Because they sort of oily and they got some feathers, but when you take this wetness off this chicken and we go to mix, that's not just going to beat up and run off. We're going to go ahead and get something that's going to adhere to it. But I think you can see the skin that is loose here. You can see my finger is under it. We're going to go ahead and loosen this side just a little because, folks, we are going to get some of this goodness right down in there right off the bat. Now, get out of there, B. You do not like chicken. Pour you a little down both sides of that to where we opened that skin up. Now go ahead and massage that back and forth around on that chicken. Then we're just going to just pour a little on the top side here. 
and rub it in really well. And the vessel that we're going to cook this in today is a 14 inch deep oven. Now this would probably fit in a 12 deep, but folks, I need the extra room so we're not browning this chicken too fast. Well, we got all the players assembled here, some rosemary, some thyme, some parsley, some celery, and a garlic clove. I don't need you to peel it or anything much. I just need you to cut the top right off of it, leave it right there. Remember that lemon that played such an important part? It is time for him to get ready to do his job some more. So we're gonna save half of that. I'm gonna go ahead, open that cavity on that chicken, give him a good squeeze and poke him down in there. Now, next, it don't matter which order this goes in cause it's all going inside there. We're gonna get so much flavor and so much goodness out of there. Some of it is blowing away in the Oklahoma breeze. I want you to take what you have left in there, pour half of it right in that, right through there. Go ahead, let's stick that garlic in there. And I don't know if you can see that, so I'm gonna point it in the direction of that camera. The chicken is loaded, it is. So let's slide him right out of the way for just a second here and let's mix us up some seasoning that we're gonna put on that chicken. Our mesquite, some coarse ground black pepper, and some ground mustard powder. I need you just to sprinkle generously. And when you sort of sprinkle from up high, you get more of an even coating in a ways if the wind ain't blowing 65. Let's give him another good shake in here of seasoning. Just try to dump her right down in there on top of that garlic. It'll all get to the goodness, I promise you. All right. Now remember, I told you the vessel that we was cooking it in was a 14 inch deep. So let me get it. We'll get our chicken back over here. Come here there, little bird. Sitting right in there. Need you to sort of center it pretty well. And we're gonna have to break again cause I gotta get some strain. Looking for some strain to tie that chicken up with. And I'm thinking that it's going to be from this hay pile over here. Hay pile? Uh -huh, it's going to be a piece of nylon twine we hope that don't melt. Oh, it's not got strain on it anymore. It's just twine. So we're going to have to go a totally different route. Option X is find anything you can that'll work. Uh, it ain't that one. Uh, maybe there's a piece of baling wire over here. So, What'd you get? chicken wire. <laughs> Let's go see what happens. When you're at the butcher getting that chicken, tell him you need some butcher twine, okay? That'll help you out. But if you can't, just go cut you some wire off the fence, <laughs> clothesline something, because we need to wrap this chicken up to where them legs will stay together. You can see there's not a whole lot of that left, so don't pour it on the chicken, pour it around the chicken. Then I just need you to take a stick of butter, and just bake, break it up any way you want to, slice it, I don't care. And if you ever think you're running a little dry, and I'll just go ahead just because I like y'all a lot, pour you a little more wine in there. You're not gonna hurt a thing. And folks, alcohol cooks out. We're just getting the flavor that this brings to it. So I'm gonna meet y'all over at the fire and we'll get to cooking. Look around here, folks. January, a lot of tall, dry, fodder grass it is. Now what I'm talking about is a fire hazard. So. Underneath that is old burnout coals. There are. Then there is four trivets sitting there. Then that flat plate of aluminum is sitting on that. Then we got a Dutch oven sitting on a trivet. This is going to keep us off the ground. We pray the good Lord goes ahead and blesses us. Please, Lord, that the wind don't get up because we don't want to burn nothing up. You see, we load it really heavy on the bottom, not so much on the top, and we'll keep an eye on it. We'll have to rotate just a little, but folks, we need to go ahead and let that chicken get to really cooking because in about 40 minutes, we're going to baste with them juices. For those of y'all who might not have cooked nothing in a Dutch oven before or might be new to our channel, when we talk about laying that coals around that oven, we're going usually around the outside edge of that Dutch oven only. Then when we put them on top, you can just cover the lid. Now, when I'm talking about rotating and I'm talking about using a lid lifter, pick the lid up, rotate it one way, Get a hold of the bell on the handle of the pot itself, rotate it the other way. That way we even out any hot spot of coals that we might have from one side or the other. Fuel that we're using today is just good Fogo hardwood lump charcoal. 
let it get good and white that way you'll make sure you got the best heat that you got coming out of it now as you can see around that dutch oven there is not one of these deals called a knob that says 250 350 450 hot so how do we judge heat in a dutch oven well first hardwood lump coals that's made out of good hardwood are going to make a hotter coal than like pine wood or cottonwood something like that because it's soft you need a hard wood. I go one hand distance away, put her here. Can you leap for more than five seconds? No, I cannot. That thing is hot, it is cooking. But you also check the sides the same manner. And folks, if you need to pull heat away from it, you can, or if you need to add heat to it, you can. But we'll keep an eye on it, we'll rotate it. We'll cook this chicken to perfection, I hope. You've seen bloopers before, but y'all really need to stay to the end of this one because it was a great wreck, it was, and y'all are gonna wanna see it. But while that's cooking along, I went and checked over there to the barn and Pony Express has come along and brought us some mail. This is Mona right here. And, and she knows that the all-stars of the cooking is the pups that are around mom and dad. To dear Sadie, Duker, the big, Meiji, and the big dog, which is the big white dog. I think she has a crush on Duker, I do. But here's to many more tail wags, and we hope you had a very Merry Christmas. We thank you so much, Mona, for sending us that picture because it is so great. And Mona says she really likes eating what her parents cook too. Well, we've been on about maybe 40 minutes we have, and I have raked a lot of that heat off the top. And I'm gonna tell you something, I should have raked it off there about eight minutes earlier, I have, because a little darker than I wanted on top, not too bad, but it is time to go to basting with some of that wonderful juice. We're gonna continue to baste that chicken about every 15 minutes. Cook time is about another 40 to 45 minutes or until that internal temperature is about 165. Very important deal. Do not leave the baling wire on the chicken. Now I want to show you how tender this chicken is. Ooh. See there? I'm just going to tell you right now, do not attempt to eat this chicken at this present time. We're going to lay him right there and we're going to let him cool. Now when you take that off the pot, I need you to just go ahead and bring it on over there off the fire or out of the oven. You need to let this chicken rest 10 or 15 minutes. That way that temperature is going to rise a little bit, but leave that lid on there, trap that moisture in there because that's what we need. Oh, the chicken doneness has brought about the what? The beagle to the table. Big, I want to thank you for another year of your hard work and dedication to being a great taste, test taster. Now, no, you've got to have some manners. You're on TV and we got to wait on Duker because he's coming in. Wait. Everybody's trying to steal it from me, Dad. There we go. Lulu, Duker, and the Meiji. So I'm going to have me a bite. Right there I am. Mm. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that chicken is like tender. Like, mm -hmm. Make me feel good. Mm. Oh, that flavor. I'm just telling you that the flavor coming out of that chicken and the tenderness, that white wine does the trick. With all them herbs and everything that's in there and the goodness of that cavity of that chicken, it reminds me a lot of Sunday night dinners that we had so many years ago at my mother's house because it was always a baked chicken that usually make it out there sometime during the week. And as always, it is a privilege and an honor that we pay tribute to all the servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp. We salute you all, we do. The rest of you, come on in here, come on. I need to give you a big old hug because we're starting out a brand new year. 
and things are really good. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the most tender baked chicken trail ever. I'm afraid to come here. Our contraption did not work because all come tumbling down, it did. But I've been in worse things in my life. Let me get everything back in the pot where it goes and we'll continue cooking. It's a good thing you didn't land on the ground. Yeah. We're missing a little, but I can't help it. You can dip around fodder if you have to. <laughs> Got a little grass in there. That's better than cow manure. Yeah. Because I have had that too. Mm -hmm. 